Hello, this is Josh Patel, and today we will be doing Biology Chapter 7, which is Extending Mendelian Genetics. So, right now we will be doing Lesson 1, which is Chromosomes and Phenotype. Our key concept is, the chromosomes on which genes are located can affect the expression of traits. So, as we know, chromosomes are basically the manual for how our cells run their lives, and genes which are located on the chromosomes express our traits. So, it's saying... The genes in our DNA express how everybody looks and what makes us all different. Two copies of each autosomal gene affect phenotype. And as we know, autosomal is all the genes but sex genes, basically, or all the chromosomes, whatever. Mendel studied autosomal gene traits like hair texture. So since hair, te hair texture is not a sex-linked gene or a sex-linked trait, it has to be autosomal. Mendel's rules for inher inheritance applied to autosomal gene disorder, genetic disorders. So a heterozygote for a recessive disorder is a carrier. Disorders caused by dominant alleles are uncommon. So for the first bullet, it says a heterozygote for a recessive disorder is a carrier. So a carrier is anything that ha can pass on a trait but does not have it. So in this pedig in this pedigree chart, not pedigree chart, Punnett square, we see we both we have two heterozygous parents, and so that means one is dominant, one is non-dominant. So their phenotype would be based on the dominant one, but they still have the recessive trait, but they don't use it, but so they can pass it on. And so as we see, our offspring still have a recessive trait and. The last one in this square here is has two recessives, so it's going to express the recessive phenotype. But it's un it's weird to have something that expresses the recessive from two dominant parents, but it's because they carry the gene and they can pass it on. And see, it says the disorders caused by this are uncommon. Males and females can differ in sex-linked traits. Genes on sex chromosomes are called sex-linked genes, so these are not autosomal. Y chromosome genes in mammals are responsible for male characteristics. As we know, males are XY, and that's why Y is responsible for males, because females don't have XY. They just have XX. X chromosome genes in mammals affect many traits, because we both have them. So this is just a uh, Punnett square between a female and a male, and one thing to see here is that the chances of having male and female are both 50-50. So, male mammals have an XY genotype, so we have one X chromosome and one Y. All of the male sex-linked genes are expressed. So since we have one of each, all our sex-linked genes are expressed because ha we have to have it. They don't need a matchup or anything. Males have no second copies of sex-linked genes, so since we only have one of each, we can't cop have duplicates. So female mammals have an XX genotype. Expression of sex-linked genes is similar to autosomal genes in females. So as we know, autosomal genes, we see the alleles and they have to match up to have the gene, right? So it's just like this in sex-linked genes for females. If, you, if they have one gene on one X, they have to have it on the other to have the phenotype. If they have one gene on one X, but it doesn't match up on the other, it's just it doesn't happen. So they don't have that phenotype. So X chromosomes inactivation random turns off one X chromosome. So that's basically they have to pair up or it doesn't really work. Our, now we're on 7.2, which is complex patterns of inheritance. Our key concept is phenotype is affected by many different factors. So this is some common knowledge here. Phenotype can depend on interactions of alleles. In incomplete dominance, neither allele is completely dominated nor completely recessive. So now we're going to talk about more dominant and recessive, but in the real life, it's not always either dominant or recessive. It's not black and white. There's some gray area between that combines both. So this is incomplete dominance. It ne ne neither shows both. So heterozygous phenotype is intermediate between the two homozygous Phenotypes. Homozygous parents phenotypes not seen in F1 offspring. 
the F1 offspring is basically just the second generation in Mendel studies. Codominant alleles will both be completely expressed. So this is one of the main gray areas in dominant recessive. So this is codominant. And it says that both alleles will be expressed. Codominant alleles are neither dominant or nor recessive. So that's incomplete dominance. So the ABO blood types result from codominant alleles. So as we know, there's three different types of blood types, A, B, or O, and then there's positive and negative, but the three main ones, they result from codominant, so neither one is fully dominant or recessive. A uh, easier example would be like if we have two cats, one plain black and one plain white, I have a kid that's black and white, we can tell black or white is neither dominant nor recessive because the kid had spots in both, meaning that it would co it was codominant and both will be completely expressed. <clears throat> Many genes have more than two alleles, so that affects codominance. Many genes may interact to produce one trait. So polygenic traits are produced by two or more genes. So the main, the main idea for this slide is polygenic traits. And so this is an example of eye color, how Need, like so we can have two genes that produce one trait of eye color, but the trait incorporates like multiple pieces as we see in these eyes, they're all like different blends. An epistatic gene can interfere with other genes. So it's basically a gene that affects more than one thing. So it affects like for this porcupine here, it's probably albino. But it affects its eye color, its needles color, and its skin color, or fur. The environment interacts with genotype as well. So phenotype is a combination of genotype and the environment. So the phenotype is how we look, and our genotype is the genes we get from our parents. So the sex of a sea turtle depends on both genes and the environment. So I'm pretty sure it has something to do with how hot or cold the egg is if it becomes a male or a female. So this happens in everybody, or even humans too. So the height is an example of a phenotype strongly affected by the environment. Based on where you live, or like on the moon or something, your height is going to differ from living on Earth, let's say. So basically, it's not just the genes that we get that affect how we live how we turn out to be, the environment has a big role too. So now we're on 7.3, gene linkage and mapping. So a key concept is genes can be mapped to specific locations on chromosomes, just like alleles. So gene linkage was later explained through fruit flies. That's basically the main idea here. You just need to know that fruit flies were used to test genes a lot. Morgan found that linked traits are on the same chromosomes. Chromosomes, not genes, assort independently during meiosis. So this was one of Mendel's laws of independent assortment. So they're just saying the chromosomes are what move, not the genes. So we'll get more in depth on this. Wild type of fruit flies are the most common phenotype. Movement type is a much less common. We don't really need to know that. Just an example here. So linked genes are not inherited together every time. Chromosomes exchange homologous genes during meiosis. So this is an example of crossing over. This is when they were saying chromosomes exchange, not the genes. And we learned about crossing over in the last chapter, so we should already know about this. Linkage maps estimate distance between genes. So the closer together two genes are, the more likely that they will be inherited together. We also learned about this. It was how we can estimate the difference using crossing over. So crossover frequencies are related to distance between genes. Linkage maps show the relative locations of genes. So basically they're using crossing over to estimate how close or far genes were away. So let's look back at this picture. If we have a gene up here, and, oh, wait, let's use this picture, a gene up here and a gene down there, they're probably going to be inherited differently because after crossing over occurs, this bottom half might be sent off to a different chromosome. But if they were like both up here, 
they'd probably be inherited together because it didn't cross over at that point. So crossover frequencies can be converted into MAC units. So this is just an example. You're probably not going to see this. So now we're on 7.4, human genetics and pedigrees. A combination of methods is used to study human genetics. Human genetics follows the pattern seen in other organisms. So basically all organisms that are mutually the same in how genes work. The basic principles of genetics are the same in all sexually reproducing organisms. Inheritance of many human traits is complex though. Single gene traits are important in understanding human genetics because it makes it easier to find the basis of genetics. Females can carry sex-linked genetic disorders. This is what we talked about earlier, how they have XX and males have XY. So male XY express all of their sex-linked genes, as we already know, because there's only one copy of each, so it has to happen. Expression of the disorder depends on which parent carries the allele and the sex of the child. So it says females can carry sex-linked genetic disorders. This is one. We're talking about how they have XX, and if it's not on one, then they don't have the disorder, but the other one has it, so it can still it has the possibility of passing on the disorder, but it they don't have the disorder. So a pedigree is a chart for tracing genes in a family. You probably heard of this chart before, but we go more in depth. Phenotypes are used to infer genotypes on a pedigree chart. Autosomal genes show different patterns on a pedigree, pedigree chart than sex-linked genes do. So for pedigrees, we mainly use them for sex-linked genes, but you can use them for autosomal because here there's a main difference between males and females, and we try to find out what genes or what traits are linked to sex-linked or sex-linked. So this is a pedigree chart. You've probably seen one of these, but we need to learn how to read one. So from the, well, first of all, we need to know that the circles are females and the squares are males. And the topmost row is the parent generation. And as we go down, scientists call them F1, F2, F3, and they just keep going. It's just the more generation. So the top are the parents and then the kids and then the kids of the kids are the grandchildren. And then there are some shaded circles or squares. And the shaded one is what they consider the one with the disorder. So usually we use a pedigree to find out how this disorder happens through the family, like which people have this disorder, and to predict who won't or who will have it. So if we're talking about diabetes, let's say, the circles would be the ones with diabetes. And the unshaded ones are just, they don't have it. And sometimes they will show the genotype, like on this one, the key here, w, capital W is dominant, lowercase is recessive. Sometimes they'll have it, sometimes they won't, and they might ask you to find it. So the phenotype is more common in males than males. The gene is likely sex-linked. So if more males have it than females, that means it's more likely to be sex-linked because males have to express the sex-linked traits while females don't. And in this one, we see a half-shaded circle, and that means it's a carrier. And we only see circles here that are half-shaded, which means that only females can be carriers because they have XX, allowing them to ha ha be able to have, have it on one but not the other. But here in males, it's XY, so if they have it on one, they have to have it in, like, everything. Several methods can help map human chromosomes. A karyotype is a picture of all chromosomes in a cell. Probably seen a picture of one of these, but not known what it was. And so this is an example here. It just shows all the chromosomes we have, all 23 of them, or 22 in this case. A karyotype can show changes in chromosomes. It can show deletion of a part of a chromosome or loss of a chromosome large changes in chromosomes, and extra chromosomes or duplication of parts of a chromosome. So here it looks all normal, but then we get like three, so it shows all the differences we can have. And that's the end of chapter seven, which was all about expanding Mendelian genetics. And 
next time we will be doing chapter eight so make sure you watch the video and study hard